I made this video to go in conjunction with a PowerPoint that you can find at my website that you can use to disseminate all of the information in the video that I have on exponents. Because as you know, there's a difference between watching a video or showing a video and a good math lesson. So in this uh, PowerPoint, I have added some of the things that I feel make uh, exponents, exponent educate. Exponents are one of the trickiest topics to teach because you have to strike a balance between concept and procedure. If you only teach procedure, the students will really struggle. And if you only teach concept, again, the students will very much struggle. Sometimes it's best to approach a problem procedurally, and sometimes it's best to approach one of these exponent problems with concept only. And the difference between what makes one approach better than the other, well, a lot of that has to do with experience. So this is a very difficult topic to teach, and uh, I hope this helps you and your students experience success. So what you're looking at is you're looking at the PowerPoint. This is what the students would see. And uh, this is the next slide, and here are notes. I put notes on most of the slides for you. Now you can download this. You can make it your own. I would probably get rid of my uh, logo there if I were you, but I think it is pretty dang sexy looking logo, so uh, leave that up to yourself. But anyway, uh, make feel free to make these PowerPoints yours, whatever you need to do. So uh, a quick introduction of the idea that we're not going to just give them rules. We're going to try to run them through a series of exercises, and that way they have some, some foundation so those rules will make sense. All right, and uh, here we're just talking about the basic uh, idea that a exponent is a shorthand for repeated multiplication and uh, the little number on the top is the exponent and the base is the number on the bottom. Okay, now here you can see uh, that you'll have notes in the PowerPoint that will tell you, will guide you to what you should be saying and how you can pace it, all that kind of stuff. So the idea here in the video it just walks, it just goes right through this, but I would actually uh, in a PowerPoint, I would actually have students uh, discuss briefly which they think are the same, and then I would have a student or two come up to the board and uh, show their reasoning, writing out their reasoning. And um, then, of course, you can clarify through these wonderful animations. Now, the next one, um, instead of just uh, playing this video and, and changing this expression, instead of just playing the video and changing this expression right here with or without the parentheses, um, it would be a good idea to have the students write down a few expressions and, and change where the parentheses go to change the value. It would really enforce their ability to read the math, and that's one of the issues that causes problems with the exponents. For this slide, it would be a good idea if the students just very quickly were to jot down their, their guesses and then... Um, We've got a nice visual demonstration of, of where the first two uh, quote-unquote rules of exponents come from. Okay, so we've got, you know, a squared is two a's and a cubed is three. Together, you know, repeated multiplication, that's what this means. There are five of them. And so you can, you know, tie back the original, tie the original idea of exponents to the product of two bases the same, you know, when you add the exponents. And over here, we see we have uh, three groups of a squared, and uh, you can kind of lead up to how that means the shortcut would be that you multiply, which is what we see on the next slide. Okay, um, one idea, I would really make sure the students can understand why these are. These aren't things to just be memorized. These come from the consequence of repeated multiplication and how the exponents and groups interact. So in this one, I would not allow the students to write all this down because you'll have students that will spend the entire amount of time just copying everything down and it'll look like they're busy. Instead, I would have them just look at it and think and then quickly jot down the letter of their guess. And then the majority of the time can be spent exploring why uh, all of these are wrong except for E, which I have one of them here. But you can spend as much time or as little time as you think you need um, depending on the misunderstandings of the students based on this. Uh, quick word of advice, 
I would not call on the kid you think has it right for this because we're trying to learn from mistakes. We want to ferret out misunderstandings and and we want to expose those kind of mis, misconceptions right now in a group where it doesn't hurt their grade. I think it's very important that students understand how to read the written instructions in the context of math. So I want all my students to know that if it says simplify and you're dealing with exponents, that you will have one of each base and a all exponents will be positive in order to be finished. So this problem here, depending on how the class went, you could have them try it on their own or you could try it together. I would expect most of the time this would be best done together. And um, I think it's a really important thing to break this down and refer it back to the order of operations. While there are parentheses here, there's not an operation in them that we can do. So we skip over the parentheses and we take care of the exponents because we can do three groups of two and three groups of three. And then the last thing we will do is multiply. And we can again show how uh, sometimes parentheses mean something, like here, and sometimes they don't mean anything. We can just get rid of them and nothing changes. Again, bringing back the idea that we want them to be able to describe why both of these are true. Memory and language are closely associated. If a student says, I get it, but I can't explain it, they're going to be like an Etch-a-Sketch. As soon as they leave the room, everything they think they understood will be gone. They need language because it will f fix their understanding into a permanent memory. Without the language, they won't remember. Okay. Uh, I would have them try both of these problems. You could do them together in a group. And then, more than likely, uh, there's one of these is correct. It's, of course, the first one. I wouldn't show them that at first. But I would do a poll and see who has this and who has this and who has this. And then we can talk about why they're wrong. And when I did, if I were to do that, I would write out each of these three times n times n times two times and then three n's and then just combining everything together. And I'd do the same thing over here. I would not call on the kids who are always right. I would call on the kids that are trying hard and maybe, uh, well, they have an idea, but likely to make a mistake. And I would neither confirm nor deny whatever answer they said, but I would call on more than one or two. So for example, for this right here, I would, you know, ask who has an answer. And if the smart kid raised his hand, no, they're all smart. But if the kid that's on top of it raised his hand, I would ask him to pick somebody. And then that person, whatever they said, I would just put a tally mark and then I would ask somebody else and ask somebody else and ask. I would pull several students to see what these answers are. And um, and then either I would break apart the original problem or I would have a student explain why, for example, uh, this one would be wrong. What, like, what mistake would be made? Um, this can be a very powerful experience right here. But this isn't you guiding the discussion of why this is right it's them guiding the discussion of what mistake would be made to get this answer that is one gigantic difference between what would happen when a student's watching this video to beef up their understanding of exponents versus what would happen in class what a student would experience in a good math lesson one thing that i might suggest would be to assign these four problems as homework Okay, the last thing we're going to introduce today is anything to the power of zero is one. Okay, the reason that I introduce anything to the power of zero equals one before I can show why it's true is twofold. Number one, it creates some curiosity if you have some kids that are aggressive learners. But more importantly, um, when they do problems with negative bases and they have negative exponents, or fractions, it gets super, super confusing to them. So by having them know that anything to the power of zero is one, um, it just kind of takes all of that that they're going to see in the next lesson and kind of unpacks it a little bit. It's kind of a, a preview of what they're going to be experiencing. And I guess we could have done that with just negative bases like this. But anyway, it's just, it's just how I've done it. And it, it's worked out well. So I would share with the students the idea that they need to balance the concepts and the procedures really well. And uh, they can't just be seeking answer getting. And if they get help, 
but they don't understand the nature of the help. If all they do is write down an answer and they're satisfied, then they've done themselves a disservice. So they really have to seek understanding as to what it is that is happening when these exponents are being simplified. So this would be the last example I would do. And in the video, this is the last one. But for the lesson, this would be the last one. And then I'd pre present those four problems that you're going to see next as homework. So the thing I would uh, try to ferret out here is that even though we're doing exponents, we have to follow the order of operations. And there is some simplification that can occur inside the parentheses. So we would take care of that. And then after the parentheses are simplified, then you do the exponent. And then the last thing you could do is multiply. So I would leave these problems right here as homework and uh, pick up the next day. And because these are going to be tricky, I would review what simplify means. I would um, try to relate the process to not following steps, but looking and recognizing which of these four things you can apply. And but always in order of the order of operations. And that's how I would phrase it uh, to the students. You're trying to see from an expression like this, you're trying to see which of these things you know is true and can be done. And you have to do it with respect to the order of operations. Anyway, um, yes, yeah, so those are the same as in the video and in the PowerPoint. You can, you can adjust them however you want. So uh, last thing, plug for my website. Um, if you found it helpful, if you found this video to be helpful, um, you could really help me out by sharing where you found it. And you could go to my YouTube channel and just click like and subscribe and leave me comments, leave me feedback. Um, I'm new to this kind of thing. I haven't ever seen this kind of thing anywhere. Um, I know some big publications try to do this, but they're really low quality. Those are written by people that it seems to me are no longer in the classroom and you lose touch really, really quickly with those little specifics that I think really make, uh, are really necessary for a good lesson. Anyway, thank you for watching and, um, let me know how it went.